What is up everyone? Today is a very dreadful day, but it's a good day because it needs to happen. It'll put us in the right direction. So if you guys remember my beautiful, my perfect FC, we hurt the engine, right? We ended up making too much power. We cracked the rear housing and we need to fix it because this car is way too freaking cool to sit. So we're going to be heading down to Vargas's this week. Gonna fix the engine, do all that. We'll talk about that all later on. But the first step to all this is, well, pulling apart this beauty. Dun, dun. So, as you guys can imagine, the worst part about pulling this apart is not that there's a million things on it because rotaries are very complicated, but everything's very pretty and we don't want to unpretty it. That's the worst part when cars break is you know you're going to scratch crap out of everything. But we're going to be good. We're going to take it all apart and we're going to fix it. And then you know what? When we come back, we can make more power. Okay, maybe not more power. We could leave it making the jam that we did on the dyno because we did pull it down to try to keep it alive, but I don't know. We're going to come out on top on this one. So pray for us, but since we figured we're finally gonna do some rotary stuff, we've been dying to do a rotary tee, and well, we have a new t-shirt dropping this week, this Friday at 12.30 Eastern Standard Time, if you guys care. We have our new rotary tee. So we did the rotary O, which I think is sick. This is probably one of my favorite like little O spinoffs. And then the full back 13 V with the kanji, I don't know what the hell it says, but I guarantee it doesn't say- Choo, 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 turbo noises. It, yes. <laughs> Brat, 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 Katsu brat. curry is so yummy. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great design, it's a full back. I love it. Everyone loves the rotary stuff. So, and on top of that, what's crazy about it is we did three colors. We didn't just do black for once. So we got a red tea and a tan tea. I think you guys would really like it. I know red and tan was a huge hit. We did the KAT forever ago. So pop a little shop cameo. And on top of that, we have a bunch of new stickers. So if you guys like stickers, grab them. We have RJ went crazy. <laughs> so, <laughs> hop below, shop your VO, cop yourself, well, a rotary O. But in the meantime, let's get to work. Also, if anyone has a dope FC hood, please sell it to me. I've been looking forever. This thing's so mangled, it just wears it really well. I don't know why I've been, I don't know why I've been in, super into like vented hoods and stuff this year. Carbon vented hood painted white with the, mm, like 34. If you're pulling your engine, just pull your, pull your damn hood off. You know how many engines that like, I've waited till the end to take the hood off and I was like, wow, I should've just did that from the very start. All right, time to undo our masterpiece. Jim, how hard is it gonna be to drain the V-mount setup? Uh, there's a plug right here on the bottom actually. Oh, nice. Yeah, exactly, more coolant, my favorite thing this week. It's all Vargas' fault. <laughs> 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 No, we're good. I'm just so sick of cool it this week. Trying to keep this as organized as possible so it goes back together easy. Exactly. If you are working on your engine, if you're just pulling your engine to put it back in, I always say try to keep things in clusters, right? So then when you go to put it back together, you thank yourself. Because if you just rip everything apart with no type of plan, you're going to hate yourself when you put it back together. Still not a fan of pie cuts. I had no choice. Also, let me show you a little cheat code, all right? If you're wearing a belt, I know mine doesn't really do much, but it scratches your fender. I've seen it happen a million times. So what I usually do is I take my belt, I'll put it like, put the buckle back here. So it covers your, uh, covers your button. And it allows you not to scratch the crap. Yeah, show my ass, my point hands. So <laughs> I'm telling you, this is what saved the Red Z. Pull it back, make sure it's real tight so your pants don't sag, you know? Admit, <laughs> Chico. Oh, that's so easy. Yeah, it's nice, right? You take that off and it opens everything up. So a round bar mounts. Normally doing a swap takes forever, but taking it apart, putting it back together once it's done, not that bad. Here we go. Such a beautiful piece. You got that? Look mm -hmm. how big that down pipe is. See if the radiator is as easy as the intercooler was. Nice. Not too bad. Oh, shit. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just happy that wasn't me. <laughs> wow. That's the worst part of the engine swap. There's not much fluids go everywhere. I know rotary shirt. Smoked. Yay, engine swap. It's the worst part is the fluid, I swear. So, we 
we have oil leaking out of our rear housing because we cracked it, right? That's usually the weak point of these things. The rear housing will crack when you make too much power. Now, we couldn't visibly see the crack in the car, but we could see oil basically just pouring out of it. And, you know, it's actually pretty common for guys to crack them and kind of just continue to run them, but you just have this like perpetual oil leak. It's got to the point where the leak, I think, is just too bad to deal with. So I'm curious if we could see the crack once we get the engine out. I'm hoping we do. Because nothing's worse than like when you have a problem, you can't see the problem, you're just guessing what it is. Mm -hmm. I'd rather just be a hole in it, you know what I mean? It's all Marcus's fault. Why didn't he give us a thousand horsepower rotary? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I thought you wanted a simple street car. I was like, me too. But then we were on the dyno and we had a lot of fun. So. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, our big juicy board. Get it out of there. Big ass turbo. Feels like a T25 on that thing. It was just a 1.3 liter. Rotaries be pushing there. Anthony! Back to Rory's. <laughs> right here in my heart. You know, we're not fixing something that's broken, we're just totally upgrading. <laughs> Is that more, what you're telling yourself? Yeah, I mean, more power? Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll be able to actually keep the power. Which yeah, yeah. This thing, it, yeah, it's a shame because this thing actually is so sick. sick. <laughs> it sounds so freaking cool. It looks cool. Like, it drove so nice. Like, but hey, it's like me getting christened into the rotary experience. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Just I love the way this, this car sounds. It's the best, dude. It's crazy. You made too much power. You gotta take it easy. Yeah, put you right at the work. Scratch. Yeah, bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's one more vacuum. Oh. Yeah, there is. The rotary, there's always one more vacuum. Yeah. Look at that. Thanks, sick. <sighs> Don't even say it, Spoon. No, I'm not gonna say it. Austin, the trans. So, we decided we to leave the trans on the car which is nice, we have enough room to do it, which is really cool, we don't have to hook everything back there. Uh, as of right now, the engine mounts are out. <laughs> the trans is disconnected, so the engine's just sitting in there, so hopefully this comes out nice and smooth. Long ass engine bay, little ass engine, but we don't have a lot of room here, so we should have just enough. It's kind of crazy how long these engine bays are, because right, look how small this engine is. People put straight sixes in these things and they fit like beautifully. J-spot? No. You would not let me do that anyways. No. Thank you, D-Shorts, for the extra protection. So the crane, like, is not long enough, but we'll make it work. This will be a more of a problem for a future us. <laughs> is it stable? Yeah, yeah. Stable. yeah we're good. Oh my god, that is so oh, on that, that fucking strap is about to fall off. What? On that side, it's gonna fucking fall off. Is it? Yeah. It's See that strap? Just between here? No, 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 it's about to fall off. Um, get it, Andy, come get, look at this so you can adapt. What are they doing? Oh, you yeah. One swap. Yeah. So I'm gonna let it go down on the subframe. Yep. Hold up. Right. Me and Anthony just get in there and lift it out. Okay. Should be slagging this flex. Is it hooked on? Yeah, go up. Cool, look at that. Everything's fine. Oh. <laughs> She's pissing. It'll piss until... Well, we'll put it back in. Where do you need me to... <laughs> <laughs> it went smoother than I thought it would. I thought it was going to get stuck, but... A little. Kind of little Isn't it adorable? A little heart. That's a little heart. It's not the size, it's the... The, the, the delivery. What was that? It's the power inside. <laughs> <laughs> the small ones are fun. <laughs> How much does it weigh, James? I don't know. Find out. You tell heavy. Me. Is it heavy? Yeah. Super I mean, it's a, it's a giant chunk of iron, essentially. Like they are heavy. There it is. Dun dun dun. So we are leaking oil right here, right, right where the doll is. And what happens is it's not thick enough there and the plate twists because it's not clamped properly because it doesn't have enough clamping force, especially since we don't have studs in here and it cracks, boom. And so we have a perpetual oil leak right on this edge right here. So 
They, they crack anywhere from completely in half, a hole, just a little seep. And uh, it looks like we got pretty lucky because Vargas was like, I'm surprised you didn't shoot oil across the entire shop on the dyno. So yeah, the powder coat doesn't make it easy, but it's happening right here. So it's probably like the inside where the dowel goes, it's probably cracked and it's just pushing out the outer edge because there's not really a much of a seal here. I guess we're gonna have to find out when we take it apart at Vargas's. I was hoping it'd be like destroyed. <laughs> it's, probably, it's better off than it didn't. If you notice, we have this giant nut right here, right? And this is the nut that holds the entire eccentric shaft in, right? This is what's holding the entire rotating assembly together, which is pretty wild. So, because obviously the plates don't go like this, like a, you know, a cradle wood or like main caps wood for a crankshaft. It slides in and it's all held together this way. So, we will be replacing this back plate right here, which is lucky that it's this plate and not anything farther forward. So we should, with a lot of finesse, be able to remove this plate, trying to keep these all together, Put the new one on, stud it in, and be good to go. Easy said. Potentially easy done. Potentially, potentially easy done. Vargas has done a lot of engines. And in his teen years, I know I've done some pretty sketchy stuff. So um, I have full faith that we'll be able to, oh, the brake clean. <laughs> uh, well, we can make this happen. Well, we made quick work of the rotaries today, and guess what? My head gasket just showed up, so we get to put the SR back together. Exciting stuff. Da, da, da. All right, you're on chain duty, you hold the chain out the way. Spoon, you're on exhaust duty, hold the exhaust out the way, and hopefully I can get the head to go on straight without any casualties. <laughs> Sorry, good. Yeah, let me get a good grip on this. All right, this is gonna suck. All right, Jordy, snake the chain through. I gotta grab your zip tie. Watch out for the RTV on the head, it's all right. Good. All right, so bring the head down slow. Oh, this guy's now stuck. There we go. Cool. Is the rear down? I don't know. I think the exhaust might be stuck now. Is that down? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, sick. <laughs> Yeah, not optimal conditions, but we got it on. You, you just assume that you didn't scratch the head with a doll. You can't see it, so you just assume it never happened. Nothing pinched under the head? I've done yeah. that before. <laughs> when you put the head down and you're on an electrical connector. Oh yeah, we've seen that before. I've done that before. Yay, we got head. You guys know the deal. I'm gonna put my washers in first because I've had heads where you drop the studs in and the washers don't actually fit through the hole. Lube it up. That smells so bad. Is that what that was? I thought it was. I thought it was Jordy. <laughs> you say you had to use the bathroom. Yeah. Could have been it. I don't, I don't think, think I've ever I smelled it. that. No, it's this. Smell this. Can it go bad? So I don't. It smells like it did. <sighs> yeah. Is it that? Whatever. It smells like sewage. Yeah, it smells like sewage for real. Put the lube on your washers, or else when you torque your head down, the torque reading's not gonna be correct. So. Fuck that thing stinks. Dude, this is crazy. You know when you can't get over how bad it sounds, keeps... <laughs> <laughs> oh! <laughs> you gotta smell it. What do you think? Crazy, right? I got a cracked rear rotary housing and a blown head gasket SR at the same time. <laughs> I am living the ultimate JDM fantasy right now. <laughs> it doesn't get... It doesn't, oh my god. Be like a Ford truck with a header leak outside. And uh, <laughs> like a Honda with a valve job, you know? You already have the Porsche that leaks. I have a Porsche that leaks. A C09 with bad synchros. Oh, yes. A Jay Z that always works. A Jay Z that always works. That's <laughs> what I'm saying. <laughs> yep. Just, dude, live in all of it. Live in all of Checking it. Checking the list. I got a pro car that's not finished. That, dude. That, 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 that yeah. Show <laughs> <bang. laughs> You get a stud. You get a stud. You are a stud. 
Thanks, bro. That's the nice thing you ever said to me. Everyone, you know, click one like is one prayer. Send is that how this works? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Don't take this out of context. You're not supposed to do this. I'm seeding them, and then we'll make sure they're just finger. You know, they're just supposed to be. That's it. Don't put them tight. Seeding the studs. Pack it off a couple times. Make sure it's seeded, and just pop, blow on it. All right. All right. You get a nut. Get a seeding pass. I know I forgot to mention why I think it failed in the last video, and it's not because it's an SR20 that failed, I believe. So the head studs that I used previously were a different head stud brand than ARP, and they were recommended to tighten them to 65 foot-pounds, where ARPs are recommended to tighten to 90. Now, 65 foot-pounds definitely didn't seem like enough to me, and I think that is the reason why we compromised the previous head gas, because it wasn't enough actual cylinder head load on the block to properly seal this thing without, you know, for the abuse that we were giving it. So I'm gonna to torque these things higher up and I think we should have no issues. I've actually got a couple DMs from people saying they had similar issues with the studs they used. Um, so that's why I'm pretty confident that we're not gonna have any issues once I torque them to a proper higher torque rating. <laughs> <laughs> Mind the technique. Look at that. Professional. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Hold my chain back, all right? Come on, grab that chain. Now you're supposed to take the gear off, but we don't have time for that. So what we're gonna do is hold her back for me. Oh, I actually marked the chain this time. How fucking ingenious. I've got a head gasket on SR on the channel in Six months. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> that just happened. Did we film assembling the centers? Yeah. yeah. Oh, never mind. I was gonna say. Well, prior to that, it was the original engine Wild. was in that thing. So. Yeah. I thought you were being an <laughs> asshole. <yeah. laughs> Jokes on me. Oh, look at that. See, save myself about twelve minutes. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> 12 seconds later. Well, remember that whole saving 12 minutes thing? Yeah, you didn't even put the rockers in. I didn't put the rocker assembly in. <laughs> oh my god. Rocker assembly and then we can't. Me and Carter, we both looked at the table and looked up at each other and went, oh shit. Well, this all has to go in first before the cams. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Lifters, snake them in the head. It's really good to bleed them first. This thing was running two days ago, so. <laughs> I think we're fine. Top covers ain't leaking. We love it. If you guys didn't see the last video, I got myself some Ichiban, Billet, Jay Z, Top covers. Look how sick these things are. Just a reminder driftage2.com, baby. This is a great moment to teach you guys about the one, the one and only, good thing spoons over there, bad thing about an SR20, right? This is, a, this is we'll say, the downfall, the weak link in the motor, right? It's not inherently bad. No, it's, it it's works, just, it yeah. works, but it is the weakest link of the engine, right? So, cam, right, this is the cam will push it down the rocker and the rocker then push down the valves. That's how that works. But these don't go directly to the valves themselves. There's actually a shim, these things, that go between the rocker and the valve. So the problem is, is these, these shims are just kind of floating there. And so what happens is, potentially at high RPMs, or if you have a, a way too aggressive limiter, if you just rattle your valve train, as I say, these little shims can go flying out and cause all sorts of chaos. Hopefully it ends up in your oil pan. This rocker can go flying, and then you it, it gets wedged, it breaks, and you have a broken rocker sitting there, which sucks, these are really expensive, or it can damage your cam. And so if you ever heard of someone said, oh, I threw a shim, this is what we're talking about. It's these little shims right here. You don't want the slit in it. We call that like the, the guide. People convert to running two guide style versus having one that's just flat that it sits on, and one with a guide, so they could do dual guide, which helps. Or people can go shimless, and shimless is a big thing, but the problem with shimless is now you're counting for the height of the valve to be perfect to send tolerance on 
the rocker right here. Very tedious, very expensive, but if you're building an SR to rev to the moon, that's what you have to do. So then this sits right in the retainer, just like that. So the height of the shim is different between each cylinder because the length of the valves aren't consistent, depending on how far it sits in the head, the length of it when it was created, and so that shim is what makes up for it. This is something that we accounted for when we built the engine. That's your assembly. So it's scary because this loose stuff's kind of flapping around under your cam, but it works. <laughs> Easy as that. <laughs> Boys, I stayed here late last night and got my car back together. I don't know about you, but knowing I was gonna leave for a while, I couldn't sleep until this thing was done, so. I haven't started it yet. Can it start? It should just start and run and be perfect and everything's great. But this morning, my rear plate finally showed up for the 13B, which is great, because I leave tomorrow to go to Fargus's. And so here we go. This is a new plate, which you can still buy brand new from, I'm assuming Mazda, but you can get them from other websites. But uh, this is an S5 rear plate, right? So this is the late model FC plate. And we can automatically tell how much stronger this plate is versus the S4 plate, which is on the engine. So if we look at this, right? This is where they crack right here, right where this doll is. So this is basically like an engine doll that holds the plates in place. And this is what cracks because it's so thin and oil leaks and you have a bad time. So if we look at this one, we'll put the right there, right? It's like 39 millimeters. If we go over to here where this doll sits, right? And look at it. Wow, I can't get away how much smaller it is. About 33. So, I mean, physically, it, you could tell how much more structure there is around that dowel point than this plate. So that's gonna give us that strength to allow us to make our same power without it breaking or even potentially more. So it's here. More power. Yeah, more power. We could make a little, I mean, we're still stock trans, but I just wanna be able to make 450 all the time. This car is 450 all the time, that's insane. We're busting butt because I will be bringing the E36 to a drift event this weekend. So this Saturday, which is, let me pull the flyer it. I'll be driving this at Bayside Bash at Ling, Langley Speedway, Saturday, September 21st. So if you guys are in that area, the Virginia area, come by, say what's up. I'll be driving this thing and uh, I'll finally get to do some more testing in it. And I figured it was a good time to get some right hand drive practice in for Ireland since that's coming up like next week. But for now, let's start the S13 and feel accomplished. Put oil in it? I did put oil in it. Got all new fluids in it. Everything's tight, everything's great. And. pressure gauge hooked up and uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start beating on the car got a break in, so we're gonna try to simulate track conditions so I'm gonna load the dyno up so there's a lot of force against it I'm just gonna beat the crap out of it get the coolant temp up really see what it does we don't want to see any coolant pressure like higher than 16 psi would be my you know if we're around that at some heavy loads it's not a big deal but I want to see it 16 psi and under
had a dipstick popped open. You'll get that on the SRs. So a dipstick pop open just splash a little oil on the manifold. But, and you shouldn't shake your car off that fast after beating crap out of it. The dipstick popped open on me a little bit, which is just whatever, built engine thing. So I got a splash of oil on my manifold. That was a smoke, no big deal. Beating on, I was looking at the coolant pressures. They did not exceed anything that I was worried about. I really didn't even see it go over. I really didn't see it move much, uh, which is really good to know because before it would just spike instantly. Now, if you don't have a coolant pressure gauge on your radiator, your radiator cap is kind of a pressure gauge. So if you look at it, there's a number on here with a pressure rating. You see it. I might never thought about it before, but this is a 1.3 bar. So at 1.3 bar of coolant pressure, that cap will open and then it'll go into the overflow. So if we're exceeding that pressure, we're going to be blowing coolant into the overflow, which was happening. And that's a telltale sign. But you also have to remember these caps can go bad and push into the other flow. And some engines honestly just make high coolant pressure. So some engines just need a higher coolant pressure cap. And there's a whole talk about higher pressure caps and efficiencies, whatever, but. Be, she's good. She's, she's good for now. Obviously we don't know until we bring it to the track and really get on it, put some heat cycles in it. But I mean, if there was anything major wrong, it would have just went wrong now. Heads properly torqued down this time and we should have no issues. So S13 spec together, a couple long nights, but it feels good. SR good. That sounded pretty insane. They, they sound so that good. Pretty insane. <laughs> All right, boys, so next video you're going to see us rip this 13B apart and shove a new rear housing on, and everything will be perfect and we'll be able to make a bunch of power. That sound good? But I got a long drive to Virginia, but it's worth it. So, of course, guys, don't forget to grab your tickets for the LZ World Tour Ireland coming up in just like a week and a half, which is insane that we'll be in Ireland next week. That always comes up super fast. We couldn't be more excited. And, of course, hop below, shop to me own, cop yourself. The new rotary tee, and this is one of the colors. The print sick. We got a bunch of stickers too. Hop below. But for now, you guys know the deal. Like, comment, subscribe. Stay tuned for more content. We'll see you guys very shortly. It's